Hi, Dr. Lopez here, and today I want to talk about ankyloglossia or tongue tie and how to assess that from an osteopathic perspective. Now, a tongue tie is defined as a shortened or thickened frenulum that inhibits the motion of the tongue. And that's where the controversy is, you know, of, of how to evaluate for uh, what inhibits the motion of the tongue. I mean, for example, I would have never known that I had never been able to swallow properly until after I had a phrenectomy and was able to realize then that I'd, my whole life I'd gone without the ability to swallow correctly. So, uh, I, as I've been studying the, the tongue ties, I've realized that there's certain areas throughout the body that are affected by, uh, by a shortened or thickened frenulum and, and how it inhibits the tongue, and that includes a lot of structures even into the rib cage and, and further, but for the purposes of today, we're going to focus on the sternum, the anterior uh, neck, trachea, hyoid bone, the back of the neck, the, the occipital atlantial joints, the upper cervicals, and even the masseters and buccinator muscles. And uh, I believe that all those can give you a clue what, as to whether someone has uh, a tongue tie uh, or not, and uh, whether it's something that you should be maybe suggesting that they should have corrected. And that could save you a lot of time uh, and frustration as a practitioner. So, in going through an exam, some things that will give you clues whether a patient does have a tongue tie or not uh, are going to be assessing tension in the sternum, the front and back of the neck, the masseters and buccinator muscles, and then also within the mouth. But you'll generally be able to have a good idea as to whether a person has a tongue tie or not that is affecting them by finding a series of these clues along the chest and the front of the neck and just from that you may have a good idea of whether they're already, they may need a correction for a tongue tie or not. So the very first thing I want to do uh, in terms of assessing, and I don't necessarily always go in this order, but uh, I just want to make sure I cover them all. And so the first is, is to evaluate the sternum. And so I generally just gently spring on the sternum along the, the body, even up into the manubrium. And uh, any tension there where the sternum feels hard or isn't able to uh, uh, spring very well, that can, that's positive and that may be associated with the tongue tie. And I'll talk about the anatomy in a different, at a different time. Uh, however, with, with her, I find a lot more tension up here along the manubrium and even, even along the suprasternal notch, there's, there's some tense fascia there. So, uh, so we've, we've sprung here. The next place to go where you can evaluate is the sternocleidomastoid muscles, and you can just squeeze the bellies of, the, of them and see how they feel. And then also along, just medial to them, you can feel the anterior portion of the, of the neck, and, and you're gonna, you can gently spring there. This can be a very sensitive area, so be very gentle as you do this. Uh, and so the next place that we then want to evaluate is going to be the, the throat, uh, the trachea, and then also the hyoid bone. So you can evaluate the trachea by gliding it side to side and seeing how well it glides. Now you may notice that it glides better to one side when you translate it than the other, and the side that is most restricted by a uh, tongue tie is going to uh, then not allow a proper or as good a translation away from that side. So in, in her case, she glides better to her left than to her right, so uh, then what that tells me is that her right side is most affected by this. The next structure I want to find then is going to be the hyoid bone. So make sure that you get, you get a hold of the hyoid bone, which may be, uh, it may be under the mandible, or it, it is going to be under the mandible, but it may be uh, fairly superior if it's, being pulled, uh, if it's being pulled up strongly. So you want to make sure that you find it, and you can translate it side to side. And uh, usually that tends to correlate with the same way that the, that the trachea uh, translates to the left or to the right. So in her case, uh, it's the same thing. It, uh, it feels like she's more restricted on her right side with the hyoid bone. And then it also feels like the hyoid bone is pulled superiorly uh, in towards uh, up under her jaw, which is common with, uh, with a tongue tie. So then after that, you want to palpate the 
uh, suprahyoid muscles and then the floor of the mouth here and so you can get the digastrics and feel for tension throughout here so the digastric muscles here are very tense uh, and then all along under the floor of, uh, of her mouth is also very tense which uh, may indicate a tongue tie. Uh, then after that Another good place to palpate that tends to be affected by the tongue ties is the upper cervicals. So I generally tend to just get my hands under the occiput and then glide uh, side to side, medial to lateral, and uh, look for tenderness there uh, and see how well the occipital atlantal region uh, is moving. And uh, if you're doing this work, uh, you you may have other ways to evaluate it, but you'll want to see how well the OA joint is moving in the upper cervicals as well. The next place that you want to evaluate is going to be the masseter muscles and the, and the buccinator. I tend to palpate muscles oftentimes by gliding my fingers in, in a perpendicular fashion to the muscle fibers. So the masseter muscles, I'm going to move uh, anterior to posterior, and I can feel that there's uh, crepitus and, uh, and knots throughout her masseter muscles and those generally tend to be sore and tender uh, as well when you find that. And then the buccinator muscle, you can, you're going to glide back and forth along where uh, the teeth are on the cheeks and any tenderness there is, going, is likely going to be associated oftentimes with the tongue tie as well. Uh, the next step is we're going to check in the mouth. So to evaluate in the mouth, uh, one place you'll want to look is under the tongue. So you can have them put the tip of their tongue to the roof of their mouth. And you can see along the midline here, there's, there's a frenulum. This is the tongue tie. And if you glide your finger back and forth, it'll feel like a guitar string. And that's, that's a, a indicative of a tongue tie that is affecting uh, the movement of the tongue. So then uh, you can also uh, then ask them to relax the tongue. And then uh, other places you can palpate are going to be along the floor of the mouth, uh, looking for tenderness there. And you will often find that one side feels uh, tighter than the other. And in this case, as along with our, all our other findings, the right side is more tight and it feels more tense. Then I can also get on the undersurface of the tongue and palpate that uh, even along next to the, uh, the frenulum here. You can also have them stick their tongue out and then just palpate the tongue itself and look for any, any uh, bumps or tender areas along there. So uh, look for all those things and then if they are positive it may be a good thing to consider uh, getting a phrenectomy for your patients or you can try treating it and then uh, treating the tongue and then seeing if all these other areas that you checked before have changed.